and this is uh, Michael Cini. Uh, I'm a local CPA here in San Augustine, Florida. I wanted to create a video uh, for you guys um, to give you an up-to-date up -to -date item on what's going on from a tax and business perspective with coronavirus. Uh, I'm following everything from legislation to uh, you know, state, city, uh, federal government. This is really particularly regarding federal government response to coronavirus and what's happening uh, from a tax perspective and a business perspective, particularly with the extension, with some of the things that are discussing that are coming down the pipelines that aren't final yet, and, and kind of what you can do. Um, I know that there's a lot of uh, anxiety and fear that's out there, uh, rightfully so, because we have a lot going on. And I do feel for everybody that's going through what you're going through, and I am truly sorry for what you're, you're going through. Uh, we have gone through uh, maybe not similar items, but we have gone through epidemics before and we have come out and we are a strong, resilient people. So with that being said, I want to give you as much information as I got in real time. Uh, some of the stuff happened today. Some of that happened yesterday. Uh, it could change tomorrow. So I just want to give you as much information as I got. Uh, the first thing I wanted to share with you is kind of a little bit of history on some of uh, what has happened in pri uh, prior crisis. Um, so basically what I, what I do want to do is uh, share my screen here and give you a little bit of perspective on some of this. Uh, now take this uh, with a grain of salt that you know, we, we can't um, predict the future. We don't know what's gonna happen. This is definitely much different than what has happened in the past, but I just wanted to at least say this. So in terms of the epidemic SARS that ended in April, 2013, six months after that ended, the stock market, the S&P 500 bumped 14.59%. And then 12 months after it was a bump of 20%. Uh, the bird flu bumped 11% and 18% within 12 months. Uh, the swine flu had the most dramatic in 09. It bumped um, you know, 35% after 12 months. I know that there's a lot of factors that go into that, but pretty consistently after an epidemic and after the end uh, um, of what they're anticipating, there usually is a bump, either six and 12 month bump. So I just wanted to mention that and give you some historical context from some of that. Um, I've been told by some financial uh, advisors that, you know, um, that, that they're anticipating on that happening uh, eventually. So what we, and I understand completely that this is uh, a different, different, um, different than all the rest. Okay, with that being said, I want to jump into one of the most pressing things that people are talking about which is the um, extension, the tax extension. I wanted to, yesterday they came out with notice 2020-17, <clears throat> basically what the president said on the 13th for relief is out there. I wanted to point out a couple of things in this notice. Um, now there's been a lot of confusion about what is actually happening. So what is happening with what was announced was that there is an extension of the federal income tax payment that was due April 15th. That has been uh, postponed until July 15th. Now there is a difference between the, I want to make this really clear. There's a difference between the, um, the tax payment itself and the actual tax return. Uh, the tax payment is what is extended, not the tax return as of today. So what that means is that although you don't have to pay the IRS until July 15th, you still have to file the return April 15th. If you don't wanna file April 15th, then you have to extend all the way to October 15th. Uh, that's really important because what is happening is people are just thinking, oh, I don't have to do my taxes anymore. I don't have to deal with any of this, which is partially true. You don't have to deal with the effects of the final uh, tally on your tax return, which is the balance due. Um, so I have some concerns over what that really means. I'm hoping that people are going to see this. What happens often is, is people will see this discrepancy and they'll go ahead and fix it on the next 
iteration or they'll amend or they'll do something else or maybe they the IRS will come out with some guidelines or some revenue procedures on how to deal with this um, or some procedures on how to deal with this. Uh, but as of now, as it's written as of yesterday, this is an extension of the payment, not the filing. Um, so if what's concerning for me as a tax, uh, as a CPA, is I have clients that probably think, you know, okay, we're good to go, uh, but we still, we need to, we're not good to go we need to file the return by April 15th, or at least do an extension. The reason why that's important is because there is a penalty for non-filing in addition to a penalty for non-payment. So those are two separate things. So a failure to file penalty, I don't see anywhere where they're talking about a failure to file penalty. So you, I just wanna drive it home that we do need to file. If you, if you don't wanna do it, do an extension by April 15th. Um, I believe it's April 16th this year. Um, yes, it's, it, no, it's April 15th because it's on a Wednesday. So uh, April 15th, you have to do an extension um, or before then. I say just go ahead and if you know you're not gonna get it done, just get an extension done now. Um, so that's my suggestion. Uh, keep in mind that as of today, it is an extension of, file, of the payment, not the filing. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into um, what they're, what everybody's talking about, or what some people are talking about. I, I want to point you to um, just a moment here. I'm going to go ahead and point you to I apologize to our the act itself. So this is something that I'm following online. It's HR 6201 Families First Coronavirus uh, Response Act. Uh, it, the, the, this bill will be one of the final bills the, to help. Uh, it was introduced and it passed the House. We still need to have it pass the Senate and go to the President before it becomes law. But we have a lot of information. Right now, the, the, the current status, I believe, is in Senate. It was delivered to the Senate yesterday. Um, I apologize. I believe it was delivered to the, yes, right here. The last action in the Senate was delivered yesterday. So they're, they're working on it right now. So let's talk about what potentially is in that bill. Um, I've read a bunch of literature on this and I think we've got some, some prelim, preliminary guidance on this. So one of the things they're talking about in this, and I'm only gonna focus in on some of the tax items because uh, that's what's most critical and some help uh, that, that they're, they're providing. So in Division G, tax credit for paid sick and family leave and medical leave. This is one of the sections they're talking about here. So what they're saying is, at least what they're discussing, which could change, that this section provides a refundable tax credit equal to 100% of qualified paid sick leave wages paid by an employer for each quarter. That sounds, that sounds great, and, and that's a good, a good thing. Let's dig into a little bit of the details. What they're, the way that they're gonna deliver this credit, uh, proposed credit, is that the, they're gonna give you a credit against your employer portion of Social Security. So on your next Social Security balance due, they're gonna give you a credit on that Social Security uh, portion. That's just the mechanism of how they're gonna um, deliver this relief. I think what they're discussing right now is just really what's the best and fastest way to deliver this relief to every single taxpayer. And, they're, and that, that's a tricky thing, because it's a, you, know, you can't just send everybody a check. Well, they may send everybody a check, but it's quicker if we can just get um, that availability like instantly and we can we can measure that in a, in a tangible way. So employer taxes is one of those ways that we can do it. The next payroll run, you get a credit. Um, so how much is that credit? They're proposing that for employees that, um, that have qualified sick leave and wages, it's $511 per day. And then for families that have kids, um, for employees caring for family members, if you're not sick, if you're not quarantined, um, if you, so this credit for $511 if you self-quarantine yourself and you're, you obtain a diagno diagnosis and you have self-isolation, that's the 511 per day, the way that I read it. Also, if you have, if you're not sick, but you have to take care of a family member, that's capped at $200 per day. The child, family members, you know, all that kind of stuff. And they talk about a child whose school or place of care has been closed, that's us right now, um, that's $200 per day, okay, for an aggregate not to exceed 10 over any period, 
any any quarter. So there you can allow up to 10 uh, days at 200 or 511 as a 100% qualified sick leave credit is what they're talking about. That's a payroll credit. Um, so again, there's more information that's in here. I'd be happy to send it to anybody that, that's, that needed. Uh, this is also available online as well. Uh, the other item is uh, people that are sick leave for certain self-employed individuals. So the first one was talking about uh, sick leave for people that are employees, right? A credit to the employer of that. The, the second one is if you're self-employed, you have the same exact 100% uh, qualification, 100% uh, qualified sick leave equivalent amount. That's that $511. Uh, what they're saying is that if you have to take care of a kid, you're gonna get a refundable credit equal to 67% of your qualified sick leave amount, whatever that amount is. So again, uh, you, we're just, saying what part you have an employer employee the same qualifications matter five hundred and ten dollars for the individual self-employed and two hundred dollars for taking care of somebody else okay um the the other one they're talking about is for paid family leave uh so those are items that if you if you're not sick but you have a qualified family leave um that's based off of the emergency family and medical leave act um, each employer will be given $200, uh, each employee will be um, uh, eligible, and the employer will get a credit of $200 per day for up to $10,000 per employee, and, the, and that will be administered through the, the payroll tax as well. Um, so that is another one. There's same thing if you have family leave, if you're self-employed, you have the same uh, qualification for that. Um, I believe those are the major items. Yes, those are the major items I wanted to cover regarding the sick, the paid leave, the sick time. Um, this also, this um, this is something that is available online. I'd be happy to, to give it to you if you need it. But if you want to look at this um, summary, it's 10 pages. It's, it's not terribly long. Um, but th that was, those are the biggest items I wanted to mention regarding that. Uh, some of the other things that are being discussed um, right now um, that I think is going to be helpful as well is uh, what they're talking about is a, a business interruption loan. So the government would provide 100% guarantee on qualified small business interruption loans. Uh, what this means is that employers with 500 employees or less I'm not sure what the phased out means yet. I, I don't have any guidance on that, but I'm gonna look into it. Uh, the loan amount would be 100% of six weeks of payroll capped at 1540 per week per employee, approximately 80,000 annualized, okay? So basically if you have an employee that's um, paid 80,000 or less, you, they're gonna get basically a loan with, which is backed by the government 100% for up to six weeks of payroll. I think that's really substantial. I do believe that's really substantial. Um, the borrowing requirement, the employee compensation must be substantiated for all eight weeks. So you have to prove that you made it. Uh, um, so what that, what that does, the stream, basically the lender is gonna be any US financial institution. Uh, the underwriting process, the lender will verify the previous six weeks of payroll and later verify the borrower has paid that eight weeks of payroll from the date of disbursement. So again, these are, this is a great, great tool. Now, what is the interest rate? What is the loan maturity? What are the terms and conditions? That is not understood right now. The Treasury Department will issue regulations on that. Uh, and again, this is what's just being proposed. So this is not final. I keep, everything that I've said here is not final, except for the first item about the, the extension of time uh, to pay uh, your taxes, your federal income taxes, that is extended. Okay, then the last item I want to go over with you today, I'm gonna to try to do a couple of these videos. The last one I wanted to go over, there's some other items being talked about. Um, there's obviously, you, whatever you see in the news, that is, I'm not gonna reiterate what that is. I'm trying to give you items that, that are not in the news um, so you can get a little bit more granular on some of this. So uh, the other thing that they're talking about is a, um, Temporary restoration of the net operating loss carryback. So for businesses, and basically they they used to be able to carry a loss back in the prior tax years. 
So what they're trying to do is say, you know, under the 2018 uh, law, the, the carryback was eliminated. So what they're trying to say is, hey, we're going to have some losses. Please allow us to carry these back into prior years so we can get an instant credit. So again, that's a really positive thing. I'm really excited to see that being talked about right now. Um, there's a bunch, there's a host of a lot of other things that are really being discussed right now, but I really don't have the time to go into those and they're not really relevant for what, what, what we're talking about right here. I will try to keep you posted on as much as I possibly can over the next few days um, as news comes out, but I just wanted to get you guys that information as soon as possible. Um, if, and I know that the chamber is doing an amazing job at, at, at providing some of these videos out. And, and I would go to the St. John's County Chamber of Commerce to look for some additional resources and, 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 and our community to look for resources. Again, I'm sorry that we're going through this, but we will make it. We are strong and um, I'm very confident in that. Uh, I hope the best for everybody and uh, take care.